Hello, hello. All right. Happy Sunday, guys. There we go. Perfect. Happy Sunday. Hope you're having a good one. We are going to be making, let me turn my lights down just a bit here. Uh, we're going to be making multiple cards tonight. So we're going to talk about the processes of making this much easier on yourself. Um, if you're a person that makes to likes to make multiples of your cards, or you donate cards, or you make multiples of your Christmas card, um, then this is going to, I'm going to share some tips. So, hey, Teresa. Hi, Betty. Betty, I used to live not too far from Simcoe. Yeah. Been to Simcoe many, many times. <laughs> All right, so I kind of wanted to show you um, this card. This card can be used either masculine or feminine card. So this is meant to be a birthday. And we are going to feature some Catherine Pooler stuff today. We're going to feature the Feel and Fizzy stamp set and that's coordinating die. I just keep mine on magnets just so they don't travel on me. And I'm going to show you how to use a stamp set like this that's going to make a lot of sense for time reasons. So, hi Beth. Okay, so first of all, when you're making a card and you're going to make duplicates, um, sometimes it's easier just to mock up a card so you know what you're doing. So the design is simple, easy, um, and maybe only a couple of steps because that just makes the whole process a lot easier. Um, so to, this is what today's card is going to be um, featuring, but I want to show you how you can kind of make it work um, with an entire stamp set. So for instance, if you look, there are three bottles and then they have corresponding like soda pop to go inside. Okay. And then there's a number of different sentiments that go with this and of course with the coordinating dies this makes this job uh, like 10 times easier so the first thing that you want to do is think about well before I start stamping is there anything that I need to cut out okay so I also cut out some examples of the other ones okay so with this card the first thing that I did I took my good old dies and I put them through and because there's three different bottles and I could basically do any number of bottles um, for this stamp set, I cut them all out at the same time. So for instance, there's like the traditional kind of Coke shaped bottle and then there's kind of a tall necked bottle and then there's one that's slightly different and I can't, sometimes I can't tell by eye. I think it might be this one. Nope, that's the same one. Anyway, so there's there's two tall necked bottles. So I went and I put all three dies through at the same time. Okay. Then I also thought about, well, so I have a series of these. Okay. They're all the three different shapes. So I have a little whack of them. Okay. Then... I figured out that I was going to use, uh, because there's two dies for sentiments, I would use those two. And I did the same thing. So I took both dies and I put them through at the same time. So this stamp set is great for this because two different shapes, you can put the dies through at the same time. So you're cutting two at a time, two at a time, two at a time. So I have a whole whack of those two shapes. And of course, you can use either sentiment or any one of the three bottles. So the way this works, it's so much easier. Okay, you can make multiples of a lot. Okay, so I cut out all of those shapes and I just literally made piles of them. So I have a pile of sentiment shapes and I have my pile of bottle shapes. So that's the first thing I did for making multiples of this card, okay? So the next thing I want to look at is background. 
what what needs to be done first, second, third, fourth, and fifth in making this card. So the very first stamping aspect is I need to put that jelly bean shape in. Okay, so the jelly bean shape is from the Catherine Pooler Bold and Bits, Bold Bits and Patterns. Okay, so here's our jelly bean. Okay, this is where your tools come in big time. So we're going to set this aside for the moment. So we've done all our cutting. We're just prepping to make our cards. Okay. And this is where your little stash of pre-scored cards comes into play. So you might want to do this next. So cut, pre-score, and get your card bases ready. Okay. Because the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to want to put that jelly bean shape on there. So this is the advantage to having a stamping platform. Okay. Because, <laughs> because it, you can do 27 of them and they're all going to come out exactly the same, right? Because your stamp never moves. You put your stamp in the proper position based on your card front. Hang on one second. I have to grab mine. Magnet is a good idea in this case. Okay. So you make sure that your jelly bean or whatever your background stamp is, is in position. And now literally you're going to do all of your jelly beans. Okay. So, so in mass production, you're going to, do, let's say you're doing 10 cards. Okay. So you're going to make your 10 bases. Okay. You're going to position your card base in going to use some buttercream. Okay. And it's going to go off screen because I only have so much room here. Ink up your stamp. Press it in. The beauty of this tool is if you didn't do it perfectly the first time, it doesn't matter. You can restamp it again. This one looks good. So again, this is number one. You're going to bring in your second card base. So you're going to literally do the same task to all 10, okay? When you're doing multiples, you do them one step at a time for all 10 or 20 or whoever you're making, okay? And then you go on to the next step because you're setting up your tools to make the process a lot quicker. So I can now make 10 card bases with my jelly beans and then they're done, okay? Then we have 10 card starts. Now, if you want 10 finished cards, Sometimes it's advantageous to do a couple extra because if you're not happy with one, um, you can always set it aside and use it for something else. So if you're going to say do 10, you might want to do 12 just in case, if that makes any sense. Okay, so then you would clean your stamp, put this away, and start up with your next step. So we've got cards with our jelly bean base. So now we want to look at, well, what's the next step? Well, Let's do all of our bottles because they're the ones that are going to be positioned on the card first. So now we're going to go and look at stamping all of our bottles. And again, this is where your stamping platforms are going to be your best friend. So again, you've got all your die cuts done, right? So you've already got all your bottles ready to rock. And this is what I advise for doing multiples. Yeah, always make a couple extra, even if it's only two extra, Teresa, because sometimes you find like, oh, I put a fingerprint on that one. Oh, <laughs> well, I still got those two extra spares. So what I did here is I just went and I used the same paper and I cut out just a single of each shape. Okay. And I've literally stuck. I'm not sure if you guys can see this. Um, they're just random pieces of paper. They're not perfect but they have the voids in them, okay? Like, there's a void in it from where you've die cut it, okay? So your die cuts now sit into that spot, and I've actually got two. You don't need more than one stamping platform. I do this every day, so I have multiples. Um, so you can set it up with um, two in this case, because two fit quite nicely. You could probably even fit all three in there, Okay, and I've literally stuck this down to a piece of paper in my MISTI so it doesn't move. 
okay? And all it is is just a matter of taking your die cuts now, and you can do two at a time in this case. So you just have to find the, the die cut that matches the shape. Okay, and you could have already, you could have them all organized by shape ahead of time. And they're literally going to sit in the void. Okay, so how you do this 100% is, one second here, I've got everything taped in because I did this for um, a make and take. So I actually adhered my foam in to my Misty. <laughs> I don't recommend that you do that, but okay. Give me one second. I don't know where I put my other foam. We might have to tear this apart. Okay. So this is how you would do it <laughs> from scratch because I want to make this clear because this makes the job so much easier. So I'm going to have to pull this apart. Okay. So you can put a scrap of piece of paper in here. Um, I had all my stuff set up. Oops, there it is. Okay. So you have your, your, um, misty paper in here, okay? And again, you can absolutely stick this in. It does, it certainly helps. Okay, so we're, we're going to use cargo, but here's your trick. Put your, put your little stamp anywhere on the, on the platform, okay? And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your stamp and you're going to stamp it on that background paper. And again, it can be any paper. It could be something out of your, your junk mail. Okay. So then what you do is you take, I'm going to pull apart my demo here. Whee. Okay. So then you take your die cut shape and you're going to position it around your image to get that perfectly centered die cut. Okay. And because you're going to do 12 of these, hi Denise, because you're going to do 12 of these, you can take, I'm just going to take my good old glue and I am going to tape this down to this inside paper. And again, this just makes that 12 card step process a lot easier because you know it's not going to move okay so i took that and now that's how i make my base to stamp them all now it's just a drop and stamp okay does that make sense so now that's all confuzzled here i can take my cargo and I can stamp these all at the same time. Like one, flip out, grab the next one, tap it in there. And because it's snug enough, you don't need really any adhesive to hold down that little die cut. Just make sure it's in before you put your platform down. Okay, and you know, this is this makes it like 100% quicker because you're not having to um, find out if your die cut is in the right spot. Does that make sense? So you're making that little dip to hold your die cut. So it's, you do it perfectly every time. And even though it took you like a minute or two just to set this up, it saves you so much time um, in the process, makes that process faster, that it's 100% worth it. Okay, does that make sense? So now, even in just a matter of seconds, I've already got three bottles. So imagine that you're 12, bang, 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 12 are done. Hi, Lori. So try this trick. Put your stamp set in your Misty, stamp it down first like this one, and then take, take your little die cut piece of paper. It can be just a scrap piece of paper that you have in the garbage can die cut out that same shape of whatever it is and this one's not going to come off because I glued it good okay so take that shape Oops. and again it doesn't have to be perfect either take that scrap of die cut and take it and center it around 
and put some adhesive on the back so it stays in place. And then you've got your, it's almost like a little mask. And then again, all it is is a pop, a pop, a pop, pop, pop. And if you don't want to glue it down, then use some repositionable tape. That works too. But be, the only reason I glued mine down is because I had literally 50 people um, doing this. So I really didn't want it to move. Okay. So, oops. So I'm going to pop this, this side in this time. A little bit of cargo ink because that's what, this is a two-step stamp. So we just do the outline. You could color these in just like that too, like with your Copics or alcohol markers or whatever. Okay, so that's how you do this. And you're going to do exactly the same thing with your sentiments. So again, I have mocked this up. Okay, I stamped them down and then configured them. And now I can actually do two sentiments. I can actually do three images at a time just because this is all set up to do so. Pop them into those voids. And because these happen to be the same color, it, it makes it even faster. Okay. And again, with sentiments, you want to make sure that things are crisp and clear. So the beauty of a stamp positioning tool is that, oops, I didn't quite get it quite right. Tappity tap, tappity tap, second press, and they're done. And if this happens to you, just what what happens is the the paper is stuck. Just be careful when you lift it, okay? But you can still get a perfect image, okay? And then you just done. And look at that. I have two sentiments ready to go, okay? So super fast way to do multiples. So now in just a matter of seconds, because I took the time to set stuff up, I could have my 12 bottles and my 12 um, sentiments all ready to go because it doesn't have to look exactly the same. You could set this up with a mismatch of all different kinds of stamp sets making for making a final card. Okay, so now let's go on to the next step. So now I would have all my die cuts stamped out, all my base ones. Okay. Then you're going to want to look at the next step. And for this step, these bottles, I'll bring the stamp set back on here. These bottles each have their own designated soda pop filler. So this is the secondary step of your card making process. So because these are designed to... Um, not fit perfectly on the stamp sets, which means they don't go from border to border. Um, these are really nice stamps to use because they're not perfectly fit. Okay. Sometimes they design them so that they don't, they have a whimsical feel. So they don't always match up. So these are perfect. Again, you could use your tool. You could definitely load these into your stamp positioners, right? If you have these, then what you're going to do is you're going to just take out your bottle stamp. Of course, things are going to stick. <laughs> okay, so take your image here and this one, leaving all of these parts in, okay? You're going to line this up where you want it situated. You're going to remove the bottle aspect, right? Okay. Well, let's let me make sure this is flat, otherwise it won't fit in that spot. Okay, so line your solid stamp up in your stamp positioner. Okay. You could always go in and double check your stamping, okay? So you'll be able to see if it's perfect or not. So ink it up with your favorite ink, and it doesn't even have to be the color you're using yet because you're just testing. Okay, and stamp it onto that base image. And if it's not where you like it, then move it. Okay, not an issue. You can also move the base around too. Okay, so it's in line with one side and not the other. And maybe that's okay with you. It depends on the stamp. The stamps aren't meant to fit from side to side. Okay, so always kind of 
take a look at your stamp and see, is it uh, matchy matchy or does it really, really matter? Hi, Carol. So you can definitely use your acrylic box in your process. Okay. Give me one second. I got a wet hand here. <laughs> towel, towel. Okay. So because this is so easy, I'm just going to use a block. Okay. And if you want to, you could use a little bit of repositionable tape on your surface if you wish. Okay. It's up to you. You could also put it into your tacky mat too. This time we're going to be using, this is a little bit of Be Mine. And you could also line them all up too. Let's see if I can get my head in here without getting into the camera too much here. And then you're just going to hold, you hold down your solid stamps for an extra second or two. Just makes for a better ink transfer. So don't be all willy nilly ready to pull it up. Um, give it a few seconds to transfer properly. And there we go. So the cute factor on this is that there's bubbles built into that solid image. So isn't that cute? So again, you can do the same thing. You bring in your, your die cut. Again, you can put this on your repositionable machine where you can eyeball it and of course if you want to switch them up then pull in another ink color too like there's a couple of be mine so there's a couple of um more feminine styled um just make sure that you're clean cleaning your uh your stamp in between this one's a little bit juicy so i'm gonna pat it with my my microfiber Okay, so you take all your 12 and line them up, and you're going to stamp all 12 of them. I'm going to grab a, uh, because it's easy, a Fiesta Blue, because we're going to do some blue. Of course, with Soda Pop, nowadays, you can come, it comes in every color underneath the sun. So, you could make it all Coke colored, like you could make it um, Sandcastle ink, which is kind of a nice light brown, which is like this so you can make it like a root beer color and then it doesn't matter for gender right you could do orange for orange soda pop if that's somebody's favorite whatever okay so you go through and do all of your stamping on your bottles dum 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 let's do this last one here let's do the the traditional kind of coke bottle shape maybe we'll, we'll do it in sandcastle so you know what i'm talking about here okay and of course, your designs don't need to be, this one is, I've got like a hair stuck to it. So I'm going to try stamping it off and see if I can pull off the hair. <laughs> okay, so sandcastle to make our regular soda pop. And of course, you can decide ahead of time what colors you want. Because your design is going to be the same, but. You know, each one is going to be a, like a different soda pop bottle. So there you go. So now you have all your soda pops all full. Okay. So the next thing that we want to do is we're going to attach all of our soda pops to our card fronts. We're actually going to take these stars and do them secondary. So, and the only reason I'm going to do it then is that... If I want to make my soda pop wonky the other way, for instance, then I know my star isn't going to be buried under something. So if I do it last, then I can, I'm guaranteed not to hide it under somewhere. Okay. So we've got those. So you're going to go back and bring in your cardstock base. Okay. And you're literally going to line up stuff, right? As you need it. Okay. So we're going to start with our, our pink. So this one, I think, there we go. We're going to glue flat to our card surface, okay? I think this is generally a, a faster way to adhere things down, but definitely can do popped up stuff. Okay, so we're going to kind of put this on 
a whimsical side like that. So let's do one more. Let's see, we need a blue one. So we're gonna, so you're gonna glue on all the same pieces on all of your card bases, right? Okay, I'm gonna go do the same thing. A little bit wonky. Wonky donkey, as they say, or I say. Okay, so next thing you're gonna look at, let's put our topper in our glue. Aren't these cute? These are for your fine tip glue bottles. I love barely art glue. Okay, so next you're gonna bring in, see, <laughs> seriously, I thought I had this in my stash. One second, there they are. Okay, we just love a good freaking foam square. Yeehaw, they make life so much easier. <laughs> And of course you can use the big ones or the small ones. So the next step in all my cards, I'm going to put on my sentiment. And I'm an over adhesor. <laughs> but in this case, you don't need all that many. We're just going to do two. And then you find your sweet spot. And of course, remember all 12 of your cards, you're going to do all 12 of your cards. So we're going to bring in our alternate. <laughs> And you're going to take this one, and you're going to add your foam dots. This is way easier than cutting, like, customized pieces, right? Because the foam dots are all ready to go. Okay. <laughs> it wouldn't be an Allison card if it didn't have a cat hair somewhere stuck in the glue. <laughs> I don't know about you. Okay, so there we go. Like, see how fast even these two cards have come together? Because you have planned and done each set um, 10 times for 10 cards or 20 times for 20 cards. Okay? Last, believe it or not, last and final step. Okay. So there's some cute little itty-bitty things all scattered amongst this stamp set. There's like a stretched out star, kind of like a snowflake, but more of a more of a star traditional five point little star there's even bubbles that you can kind of add as your accents so i like to keep the colors of my card pretty simple so i'm going to go back to my b mine okay and in the design there's three so i'm going to do just that this is the one good thing about if you plan out your card ahead of time you're basically you're just copying yourself and copying yourself and copying yourself even if it's just a doodle that you have off to the side saying oh yeah that's right i gotta put the stars here here and here so your doodle or your sketch is going to help you in the process like all along the way okay so there's one card and it's completely done all i have to do is fold it that's it Okay, so we're going to go, I'm going to go back to my Fiesta Blue. I could do another color, um, but again, I'm just, I'm trying to make this easy on myself. One little, two little, three little stars. And again, 10 cards, 12 cards, it, they don't have to be like fancy schmancy. Okay, so look. It's basically the same card, but I've done it like a little bit different because I've made the job easier for myself. I think this stamp set is fantastic because can you see this could be a female. This could still be a female card. Okay. But you can make it more masculine. Okay. This doesn't really have a, it's a gender neutral stamp set. And I highly recommend getting the die set to go with it too, because it's fantastic. Um, Father's Day, like Pops, you're the tops. Super cute. Our love will never fizzle. Dad's cola. Here's to you and feeling fizzy. And there's um, die cut for the bottle cap. There's die cuts for the soda pops, the straw. And the two sentiments, and I think it's the, one second, two stars, three stars, three, four stars, and the arrow. 
So very, very simple, great combination to make masculine or feminine cards. It would be a great beginner stamp set too, I think for somebody like a kid. Um, I think it's a very, very well designed stamp set actually. So something you could teach your kids or your grandkids, they could have fun. They could color in their own soda pop. It doesn't have to be filled. You could just ink, like you could literally just press the bottle into the ink pad and they would already have soda pop in them. They could draw in the bubbles. Um, so many possibilities with this stamp set and so cute. And again, thinking about making multiples, it really is a thought process. And even if you have to write down your steps, step one, I'm going to do this, step two, and then at least you have a reference as to what what you're going to do from the first step right to the end product. So lots of fun. I hope I've given you a few tips when it comes to making multiple cards. I know there's lots of people that basically, especially for Christmas cards, you have one design. Yep, this is my design. So I know I need like um, two different colors of, three different colors of ink. Okay, ink, ink, ink. I know I need wet glue. I know I need this. And literally setting it up like an assembly line. It really does make sense in that respect. So, highly recommend the stamp set. Highly re <laughs> recommend a, sta a, a stamping tool. Like, this will save your your day every, every time. I highly recommend uh, one of those. And get one of the larger ones to start. Because you can fit a whole card base in here without actually bending it so again so do you guys have any questions about doing multiple cards at all or any questions about Catherine Puller inks or anything like that I know I love my stamping platform too Teresa I, I couldn't be the card maker without it yeah so and you know what when doing multiple simplicity is the best <laughs> Um, and you're going to do the same thing if you're cutting strips of pattern paper, um, strips of cardstock, um, all that kind of thing. So if you need 10 one inch by five and a half inch strips, then cut your 10 out, you know, cut it all out of that one piece of pattern paper. So they're not always going to be exactly the same, but you're always going to get the majority of the same print, right? Unless it's like a really bold print on a 12 by 12. But yeah, so again, think about it step by step by step. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for coming around today, guys. Um, I have a question for you. Hi, Louise, I missed you out there. Um, <laughs> um, do you like the 6 p.m. time frame better? I think that's what we're kind of going to, I'm going to go for during the summer because um, I'm, okay, sorry. I'm at 6 p.m. right now, 6.35. Um, so it depends on where you guys live. Um, this might work better for the summer on a, on a Sunday evening. So that's kind of what I'm gearing up to do for the rest of the summer. Just because I think it'll be much easier. I, <laughs> I can actually have my full Sunday day. And I don't have to come home for my 3 p.m. here at Mountain Time. Yeah, so Beth, the 8 p.m. Eastern works pretty good. Yeah, okay, that's good. That's good to know. It's a good time, Carol. Okay, perfect. So at least for the summertime, guys, I'm going to go to 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, just because I think it'll work. You're okay with the 8 p.m., Teresa? Okay. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to go 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the rest of the summer. Um, I will be doing some pre-video stuff for the first week of July. I'm taking my uh, scout kids to scout camp for nine days. So I'm going to be out in the wilderness <laughs> with no cell service or anything like that um, for nine days. Uh, so I'm trying my best to get you guys the three videos that I'm not going to be here for made ahead of time so that you will still have some stuff that'll pop up on a Sunday and a Tuesday. I just won't be live. <laughs> so I'm aiming to get those done in the next two weeks so that they're already loaded and Rhea can just post them. So yeah, 
um, if you have any questions or anything that you guys want to see, send me a message to my personal account. Uh, I will put a comment in the section below um, at the very end. Um, anybody want a classic card? Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> I'll send out three. I got three. <laughs> First three people to put... Uh, okay, Beth wants one. <laughs> uh, two more people to put the word yes in and I'll send you a card. One of these cards. <laughs> I don't know if you... I can make this one just with a note in it so you can reuse it. Oh, Teresa says yes. <laughs> okay. Anybody else want a card in the mail? And Carol says yes. Plastic card. Okay. I will. Yes. That, exactly, Carol. Okay. So Beth, Teresa, and Carol, I think I have all of your addresses. I will send those out in the mail. And once again, uh, if you guys want to see something specific, just let me know. And I will see you on Tuesday. Awesome. Thanks for joining me today. Have a good rest of your weekend, guys. Bye.